Hello YouTube, I am going to show you how to etch glass today using your silhouette and some etching cream. So this is our free design for November. Um, etching glass is awesome. I have been etching everything, it's a lot of fun to do. The plates are really good to start with too because they're flat unlike the cups. So you can get a really pretty outcome with it. It's also super easy, pretty inexpensive for the bang for your buck you get and um, pretty easy to do. So let me show you what you need. All right, so these are um, the supplies you're gonna need. Um, this is some sticky vinyl. Um, it's uh, similar to Oracle. Um, this is what I use. I find it locally, so it's not Oracle. Um, you're gonna need some transfer tape. Transfer tape is reusable, so take all your little scraps and reuse them until they don't stick anymore. Um, you're gonna need some painter's tape. Um, some silhouette tools and obviously your plate. I get my plates at Hobby Lobby when they're on sale. So they're $5 normally and I think you get them for about $2.50 maybe. Um, a paintbrush and then this is what I use Armor Etch and I go to Hobby Lobby. Can you tell I have one down the street? And use the coupon and this is about the cheapest I've found Armor Etch. You can use any kind of cream you want to. Some people are very partial to theirs. To some kind, to a very specific kind, I don't care. Um, so we're gonna go over to the computer and I'll show you how to make sure you can get your design all lined up on your plate. So these are our two free designs that are gonna be up on the web page for November. So I did this one already. That was the example I showed you. So I'm gonna show you the eat, eat, drink, and be thankful with a little turkey. So what we're gonna do is this is um, I've just opened our Silhouette Studio software. And you're going to click up here to the, um, the grid box and unclick show to grid, show grid because trying to make your circles in here for your plate and seeing that grid is a bit annoying. All right. So what I'm going to do is click my circle over here and just loosely draw a circle. Now go up here to your arrow and click him. So he's selected. And now you're gonna to wanna to go to the scale window up here. And it's gonna give me specific, specified dimensions. So I've measured my plate. He's 10 inches by 10 inches. And unlock, undo lock aspect ratio or it'll, that's about the only time you wanna undo the lock aspect ratio because normally you want him um, or else you get some strange looking. Normally you want them selected or else you get some strange looking things. So I did the same thing. So I drew another circle, hit my arrow, and now the inside of my plate is six inches by six inches. And we'll click apply. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is click both of them and go to object or rate, no, object and align. That'd be my puppy. And we're gonna align center middle. So basically that makes our plate for us. So this would be the outside realm and this will be the inside part. So I'm gonna click both of them again, drag and select both of them, and I'm gonna group them. All right, so basically this acts as our plate. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is do file and merge. And that's on my and find my design. This is um, as an SVG. Sure, errors clicked. So what I'm gonna do is click this. This is already all together, but my little turkey is separate. So what I'm gonna do is click this one, hit shift and click so they're both selected, and then shrink them down to kind of sort of what looks good. That's a little too small. There you go. Give or take. And then when you kind of get to this point, what you can do is go click it, right click and hit ungroup. So basically at this point, it's gonna break everything up. So you can kind of move things around like you want them to be. And like this, this hat's a little bit bigger so we can shrink him. And this is a little down, yeah, but basically this all kind of comes up to personal preference, um, where you want everything to go. 
but basically everything needs to be inside these red lines and your turkey needs to be somewhat centered inside your your circle um, let me fidget real quick and then I'll be right back all right so I've got them kind of situated like I wanted them to um, this is kind of personal preference how you want it to look on your plate if you um, if you wanted to, you could take the turkey off and then copy this guy. Copy him and then put the put that in the middle. You could do whatever you want to. You could also put like an initial in the middle if you wanted to do that. Um, so, or you could put the turkey leg in the middle. <laughs> anyway. So this is kind of up to artistic interpretation, how you want it to look. Also, you can... Um, Make them bigger and smaller if you have a 12 inch plate or if you have a um, 6 inch plate. Anyway, um, glass etching is traditionally done on the back of the plate. If you want to um, put them on the back of the plate, you're going to need to mirror him. So you go to object and mirror and flip horizontally. So he's going to be backwards. If you want to put him on the top of the plate, um, you wouldn't mirror him. You want to put them on the top of the plate, you wouldn't mirror them. If you put food on top of etched glass, you run the risk of the where the etching is staining. So be aware of that. But if you want to put the turkey on the front of the plate where it's only going to have cookies, go for it. All right, so he's all still highlighted. We're going to go to the cut settings over here. And let's see. Here we go. And so we want him to all cut. Now, I do the vinyl and have them set to one. Really important, this is, I love this font, but for whatever reason, when it cuts, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. So you need to make sure you overcut him because it makes weeding him a lot easier. So what I do is I normally overcut it, um, start at point two and then end at point three. It makes it a lot easier to cut. All right, so I got my sticky vinyl put down on my sheet, on my cutting mat, and I put it backing side down. So this is the backing. We put it down, and I'm gonna hit load cutting mat. And then I'm gonna check my blade. Where are you? I'm gonna check my blade. It's actually at a two right now actually to two right now so I'm gonna move them so it's back down at a one put him back in and I'm gonna go back over to the machine and hit test cut okay so my first test cut um, kind of didn't cut so I moved my blade up to two which is probably why it was two to begin with and um, see, I get a good test cut where my triangle is left in there. Um, you can use the arrows on the screen to move your test cut over. That's what I did. So I'm going to load my cut mat back in there and I am going to um, cut my design. All right, so it's all cut out. I don't know if you really see it. It doesn't really matter. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to cut out our design. And if you can see, I left the circles in there. They make it a little bit easier to apply our vinyl. All right, so weeding for etching kind of messes with your brain a little bit because normally what you would leave, you take out. So see, like I took out all of Santa so the etching cream can get there. So the same thing goes for this. So my turkey, and you need a hook. Trying to weed this stuff without a hook is not fun. You're going to take out, I'm going to take out my turkey. And you kind of have to think to yourself sometimes, like, what do I want? What am I, you know, what do I want on my, um, on my plate? Because sometimes it, it'll mess with your brain. So, wee. So I have a one-eyed turkey. 
Anyway, so what I'm going to do is basically weed out. So you'd weed out all your letters. So you weed out all your letters. So wherever you want the etching cream to sit. So I'm going to weed and I'll be right back. All right, so I have them all weeded. I said it before and I'll say it again. This mess is worth your brain because you're taking out what you normally leave and you're leaving what normally you would weed out. Um, it messes with your brain, but it's just vinyl. If worse comes to worse, cut another piece. I have done it more times than I'm going to admit to. So what I'm gonna tell you to do now is to cut up, is to cut basically along your circle here. Okay, so I cut up all the little pieces it's much easier to apply smaller pieces of vinyl to etch than bigger ones. Basically, from this point, you're gonna pick, pick a small piece and we're gonna put them on the back of our plate. And the other reason I like to keep the circle is because now you have, it's easier to line it up if you have your circle than trying to line up a straight piece with a crooked piece. And now you have a, a curved bottom too. So, this is our transfer tape. I like the clear transfer tape so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, put your transfer tape on. Is this a scraper? I think that's its official name. And scrape really well. Because you need to pull up these pieces in the middle. There we go. I reuse my transfer tape until it can't be used anymore and kind of just plunk it down there. Scrape really well. And if something doesn't want to stay, you scrape it some more. There we go. And then, see when I flip it over now? See why it's gotta be backwards? It makes a little bit more sense. Now from here, I can put my, my thankful will go over here, be thankful, and wherever my and is, my and will go over here, my and and a hat. So basically what you need to do is put on a piece, flip it over so you can see it, and then pick another piece to apply. So I've got the transfer tape on this thankful. I've cut a circle in there to make it a little easier so you're not trying to line up. You're not trying to put a, a straight piece over the, the curved part. And so be thankful needs to come down here. All right, so you want to line it up so that it lines up with your B. There we go. And burnish really well. Now, the thing with the etching, and this is why the plates are so nice, is they're relatively flat, is you can't have any gaps or else the etching cream will find a way to get into it. So, and that's why you need to make sure you rub really well so that there are no gaps no bubbles and there can be bubbles in it see like there's a bubble down there that doesn't matter but as long as where you have your outline where your your cut is and everything is flat because if it's not that etching cream I promise you will find a way so you're just gonna keep repeating the process so now we're be thankful and you're just gonna keep building until you're done. All right, so I got all of our all of our um, stuff lined up. Now before, and when you're doing this, you need to apply, like apply, then flip and look, and apply, and then flip and look. And then when you get it, after you peel off the transfer tape, flip it over and look and make sure it's the right word in the right spot. Um, but it's really not the end of the world. Sticky vinyl is relatively inexpensive. So if you mess it up, Peel it off and do it again. All right, so before you put on the turkey, the turkey is put on the exact same way with um, transfer tape. 
flip him over and kind of see where do you need him to be. Because when I did Santa, I had Santa upside down. I'll totally admit it. So, um, but just, yeah, make sure he's kind of where you want him to be before you put him on there. Okay. So you need to double check and make sure that everywhere that there's a cutout, that there's no air bubble by it. I promise you that etching cream will find a way. Air bubble like that doesn't matter as much, but just make sure that everything is flat on your plate so that, uh, see like that one, so that your etching cream can't find a way up underneath it. Now, anywhere the etching cream hits, it will etch. Um, so take your painter's tape as really cheap insurance for like a place like this. Um, so that in case just a little bit gets somewhere, you're not looking at etching right there. So I'm going to tape up my plate and I'll be back to show you. Okay, so I have painter's tape anywhere. You can hold it up to the light and see where the light shines through. Um, this is just really cheap insurance because anywhere this stuff touches, it's going to etch. Um, and double check to make sure that there are no bubbles because it will find a way underneath it. So shake... Shake, shake, shake. And bubbles over here are okay, but just not anywhere around your, your outline. And it kind of makes a mess when it opens. All right, so I use a paintbrush. I've seen, is it uh, sticks used? But basically, unscientifically, squish it on there. Exciting TV here. Um, you want to put on a fairly thick, even coat. And that's all there is to it. Alright, so you want to make sure you put on a fairly thick, even kind of coat. Not high tech. And we're gonna let it sit for a while. All right, so it's been a couple minutes. Um, I'm not scientific with this. Some people say two minutes, some people say five minutes. I just kind of say until you remember it's back over here. Now, one of the problems with the etching cream is it tends to be blotchy. So after a couple minutes, I kind of either, I kind of do a combination of reapplying, so slapping some more on there, slash basically just moving it around just to make sure that everywhere's covered so that if there's any splotchy you've kind of given it another chance to be covered okay um this would be optional it's going to etch either way so i kind of put some more on slash kind of squish around what i've got and then i let it sit for a couple more minutes so that's my plate. I'll probably let it sit again for another, I don't know, two to five minutes maybe. And then it's going to go to the sink and I'm going to wash it off. All right, so all I did is I went upstairs to my kitchen sink and I washed all the etching cream off. And now basically what you're going to do is you're going to peel all the vinyl off. And one thing I will tell you, when you start peeling off all of this, you kind of got a combination of leftover etching cream and like water. So your plate might look like a bit of a mess when you first kind of look at it, but it's it's not the way it's gonna look, if that makes sense. So it may look like a mess, but once you wash it off again, it cleans up pretty well and it's pretty cool. So um, I'm sure you wanna sit here and watch me peel off vinyl, but I will peel off vinyl and show you the end product. All right, there's our plate. All I did was peel off all the vinyl and then I hit it with some Windex just to get rid of any strange weird spots. Um, just make sure it is easier to apply little pieces rather than trying to apply the whole thing at once. You're more likely to get bubbles that way. Um, and if you get a bubble in there, it's not the end of the world. Um, but that's our eat, 
drink and be, be thankful. He's free in November, so is our eat, drink, and be merry. And then I wanted to show y'all, this is our grateful, thankful, and blessed frame. And see in here I put in a J um, for my last name and nobody will steal it if you take it to a party. And then this one says Christmas calories don't count, which would be great to give to a neighbor or somebody or to take to one of the cookie exchangers for Christmas. And you're looking at something that's just really maybe five, five, seven bucks to make. So, um, you can see why they're one of my favorite things. Um, I will put a link up to our free designs and you can sign up for them on the webpage. Thank you so much for watching. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can sign up for the newsletters on the webpage. I send them out once a month, give or take, and it has all the free stuff and the new cool stuff. And um, if you have any questions, let me know anything you want to see. Um, let me know at the bottom. I can't always do everything, but I'll at least try. Thank you so much for watching.